Hello everyone, welcome to the next installment in the collection unboxing series. And oh boy, I'm actually filming this well over a year since I've actually got this collection. So there's even more that I probably don't remember that are in these boxes. And there are still more boxes than I realized left to go through. Let's first notice that on top of here, there are more stable mates. And like before, I'm going to be taking all the stable mates out and I will be actually going over these more in a different video just about the stable mates. And I'm sorry, the sun is kind of coming down and causing issues already with filming. Here's a stable mate just for now though. Look at that, a shiny golden uh, saddlebred who was once a keychain it looks like because she has a little hole in there. But I'm going to pick up all the rest of these stable mates and save them for a different video in this collection unboxing series. All right, now that the stable mates are out of the way, let's start pulling out some models. I see Benji and Tiffany here, who I actually do already have. I got them at Briar West 2019, I believe. They are so cute though. I really love these models. I think they are very, very adorable. And there's something about them that reminds me of the uh, past dogs my family has had. Let's see what this model is. Oh, I actually do kind of remember this one now. This is a classic who I think was like from fun with Briar events or something. I'm not sure. I'll put it on screen because I don't remember. It is a really pretty dappled gray pinto. Some very nice dapples and markings and kind of a metallic -y color as well. The gray is not just a simple gray. It's actually a little, little metallic and silver looking. So that is super pretty. Let's next take a look at cute little Misty here. This isn't a normal Misty. This is actually one of the flocked Misties who are really cool. She does need a little TLC though. Her uh, hair is looking uh, kind of scraggly. It looks like she is probably actually missing quite a bit of her tail hair. But her mane can probably be uh, brushed a bit and the rest of her body looks maybe not the best. It looks a little worn but she is still really cute. And I do quite like the Briar Flockies. I did not like them at first, but I've grown to really like them. And I think she is just very cool. Next up, we have a Peter Stone. Oh my goodness, and this is a really pretty Peter Stone as well. This is a little yearling who actually does have the name of the model, it looks like here. Wow, look at her. She is beautiful. She is a pretty glossy uh, roan, I'm guessing, or just Sabino. She might be like a gray Sabino. I don't know. She's super pretty though, like a roan or gray Sabino with very pretty white markings that are airbrushed on here and have some nice splattering. She is quite a beautiful model. I really like her. I feel like this might also be a Peter Stone kind of looks like it mold wise. It is in fact another Peter Stone yearling here. This is another glossy one and she has some really loud pinto markings and is like a very cute bay. Ooh, she is very cute. Oh my goodness. And I don't believe I've ever had the Peter Stone Arabian yearlings before getting this collection. This one does not have a tag so I don't know the name of it right away here. I really love the face on this one. That is a really cute face. All right, I'm looking here and I totally forgot that this model was in this collection. I think he was even like on my in search of list at one point. I believe his name is something with an A. He is a Huckleberry Bay unicorn. And oh my gosh, he is so fun and cool. Look at him. His base has been modified here. It looks like it's been uh, screwed on and the Whoop, okay, it kind of just came off. I don't know if I will keep his base like that necessarily. I love that this guy is not just a plain white unicorn and has some really fun colors in his mane and tail. Kind of like a faint goldish color, blue and pink. And same goes for his mane and his horn and face. He is just a super fun model. I see a little baby, the color crazy Secession and La Fire full. But this is the version that has the pinto markings. There were two versions of this uh, set that came out, one that didn't have pinto markings and one that did. 
And I already have the version that does not have the Pinto markings, but I don't have the version that does. So I'll have to decide which of the two versions I want to keep in my collection. But he is so cute. It's kind of hard not to love the Lay Fire mold. It's just so awkward and cute and derpy. I love him. I am curious what horse this is. I mean, I'm curious what they all are, but this one I'm not sure. It's kind of so covered up, it's hard to tell. Oh, maybe I do know which horse this is. I do know what horse this is. I mentioned before that there might be some connoisseurs in this collection. Well, here is one of them. This is Tempest. I cannot recall the year he came out at the top of my head, but he is one of the older Briar connoisseur models. And I, oh my gosh, he is just incredible. This is one I'm definitely gonna be keeping because this color is fantastic. And I also do love this mold as well. Wowzers, he is something else. He is gorgeous. He's got a really cool face. Look at all the mottling going on on his nose. If my camera will focus on him properly, but look at that face. Oh my goodness, so cute. Those crazy, crazy Appaloosa markings are just so fun and fantastic. Also really neat that he has a clear base. They don't usually make the Smarty Jones mold base clear. It's usually always like colored like dirt usually or sometimes grass. So yeah, he is so cool. I'm so excited to have this guy. He is just a phenomenal looking model. Oh, this is just so exciting. There are so many great models in this box. And I kind of did purposely before pack up a lot of the like super nice, super cool models into their own boxes and then the kind of more common regular run models in other boxes. So that's why in these videos, sometimes we get a box like this where it's like, oh my gosh, just really cool models, like every single model, because uh, that's how I kind of ended up packing them up. Here is a Peter Stone Palouse and she is an Appaloosa. Oh my gosh, I love her already. She is probably gonna be a keeper for me as well because she is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. She has a lot of details going on too. She is a bit older Peter Stone and you can kind of tell because they do the resist, resist uh, kind of dapples or extra spots and stuff and they really kind of don't do that anymore. Oh my goodness though, she is gorgeous. Look at these eyes on this mare. They are beautiful. She's got so many spots, a lot of shading going on too. She has just a lot of neat things happening here. I wanna to try to show her hooves here as well because those have like hand painted stripes on them and they are also glossed. That is just so cool, beautiful amount of detail. And she does actually have a signature on the bottom from 2005. Can't quite read the name. I will eventually figure out all the different Peter Stone models. It's just gonna take quite a bit of time to figure them out. Peter Stone's a little harder to find than Briars when it comes to identifying them. Now I see a few Peter Stone issues here. So let's go ahead and pull these guys out and see what they are. Here is a nice chestnut guy. Nothing crazy fancy. He's just a nice chestnut with a white sock and a bit of a long blaze on his face. The next two ishes here look like they are decorators, so they are gonna be a little more fancy. Here is a gold one, very shiny gold-ish. And he actually even has a little bit of like resist spotting on his haunches to kind of look like Appaloosa markings which that's pretty cool and fun. He's got a white mane and tail and one, one sock. Oh, and he does have a uh, thing on his belly. Very neat, he is a fun dude. Oh, and his eyes are actually like kind of painted blue, mostly kind of black, but they have like a stripe of blue in there. It's kind of neat. Oh, this one's a winter colored one. He is blue, but he also has little bits of snowflakes on him, which my camera is kind of struggling to pick up, it seems. You can kind of see he's got some little, little snowflakeies on him. 
I'm sorry, the lighting keeps changing and it's really hard to show the models without a bunch of unfortunate sunlight coming through. He is quite pretty though. I might have to keep him. I'm trying not to keep every single ish because I am trying to downsize my model collection as a whole and that includes even some of the molds I conga. So I will have to decide which ishes I'm going to be keeping and adding to my collection and which ones I will decide to sell. But this one might be a keeper because he is very pretty. I love this nice pretty blue on him quite a bit. Looks like we got, oh my gosh, maybe a whole bunch of Peter Stones in this box. Holy moly. So this is, I believe the Western Performance Horse is the mold name of this one. I forget it sometimes. This one, this is another mold where I'm going to have to try and downsize because I love this mold, but I really probably shouldn't have like a huge conga of it because again, trying to downsize. So I'll have to decide which models on this mold to keep. But this guy's kind of fun. He is like a weird, I don't even know if you consider him realistic color because he's very white with a black mane and tail, black legs with white socks. Very cool looking though, and this guy is glossy. I will continue down this row to another one of these guys. Oh, this one's a little fancier, or a lot fancier. This one has what looks like a custom mane and tail on him. And uh, by that, I mean a custom factory mane and tail, because Peter Stone does do that with their models. And it looks like his name is Jumpin' the Gun. He is quite a fancy looking model though. Oh my goodness, I might have to keep him. His color and his mane and tail are just so fun and pretty. Oh, I am quite liking him. He is gorgeous. He's even got some nice kind of subtle dapples. They're not too noticeable. Just nice and subtle. Yeah, what a gorgeous guy. I really, really quite like him. And I believe this uh, mold is just going to continue for a little bit here. Because we have another guy, and this guy even has some tack on him. Which probably obviously did not originally come with him. The tack is probably made by somebody else here. Wowzers, look at this guy. He's a cool uh, Appaloosa, but what I'm honestly most uh, amazed by is this neat tack set. I do enjoy some lovely briar tack, and this set does look very lovely. Now I'll have to see if there's possibly any uh, signatures or anything on the inside of this. Find out who created it, but it is a beautiful saddle. It's got some nice kind of like silver work on it. And it's even got a breast collar and a bridle as well. Yeah, I can't really show this too well without the sun trying to peek in, but the bridle has some fun like little beadwork things on it. I'm not going to untack him in this video because of time, but he's very cool and I absolutely love the tack set. On to the next horse in this like row of models. Oh, we have a another connoisseur who I do kind of remember here. Look at that. This is Winsome, I believe. Now, unfortunately, Winsome, I do remember from when I packed up these models, was packed in one of the Briar Velvet bags. And unfortunately, I'm trying to show it as best as possible here, but she unfortunately has purple staining on her face and on that marking and a little bit on her legs from being in the velvet briar bags that unfortunately did stain sometimes the connoisseur models. So that is unfortunate. I'll probably try and see if I can send her to a restoration artist to get her fixed up because obviously she is worth restoring. She is beautiful. Look at those awesome looking markings with beautiful mapping. Her color is really nice too. Very nice rich black doesn't feel like it's just a solid black either. It feels like it has some undertones of different colors and stuff going on. It is a shame that she has some issues, so I'll try to see about getting her restored at some point. And I'm also not sure if I'll keep her or not. I'll have to think about it because she is really cool, but I don't really collect this mold too much, so I'll have to decide on that at a later date. And I see in the corner here, there is a handful of various tack. So there is a briar saddle, and there is a saddle here that looks like it is handmade. It's a kind of a tangle of stuff right now, but I see saddle bags. Oh, those are cool. There's a little rope, a little breast collar, and the 
bridal and all the things. So that's really cute. I quite like that. I'll probably be keeping that in my collection because I do like some fun, interesting uh, model horse saddles and tack and things. And then uh, with those two, there's also two blankets. I also see here a little pink uh, nylon briar halter. And I see a Peterstone Pebbles right here, actually. Uh oh, who's sticky stuck to him here, but uh, that should come off. Oh, here's a little fun. Peterstone Pebbles with some really interesting dapples. You don't see dapples like that too often. It almost looks like water fishy scales almost. I don't know. <laughs> Not exactly the most realistic for sure. But that's kind of fun, a little older Peterstone Pebbles, and I don't think I've had a Peterstone Pebbles in this mold before. So that's really cute. Let's see what's in this. Must be a... oh, this looks like a foal, a Peterstone foal. It is. Oh, it's a little Peterstone weanling. Its legs are a teensy bit warped. I'll have to straighten those out at some point. Really cool though. Nice glossy black Appaloosa. It's got some fun customization because it has a little swishy tail and the ears are also pinned back so it is a very grumpy looking little foal. That is so cute. How, how adorable. Even looks like it has a tiny bit of mottling kind of around its muzzle as well. What a cutie! Let's check out these Peterstone horses here, which I believe look like they're all the same one. Oh, that's right. These ones might have different markings. That's why there's three different ones of them. So this is like one of the Peter Stone releases where they've done uh, multiple different kinds of markings. It has the same color, but it has different uh, war paint on it. So this one's got some handprints, some stripes, and some horseshoes. Neat. The next one here has some red horseshoes, red little spots, and then some more red spots. They're a little hard to see because of the red bay body coat. And the last one here has black markings. It has black stripes and black spots. So that's kind of neat that all three of these guys have some, oh, they also have <laughs> eye markings around their eyes. I did not notice that circles around their eyes on those two. Does the other one have it? Let's see. Uh, no, the one that has the white markings does not have war paint around the eyes. This one does not have anything written on its belly, but the one with the black markings does. He looks like he is signed and also numbered 91 of 200. And the one with the red markings here is not signed, but does have numbers. Camera does not want to focus on him at all, but it says 282 of 500. And I see another one on this mold, which I believe is like Western Pleasure Horse is the name of this Peter Stone mold or something like that anyway. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. This one is a Appaloosa with some fun splatter spots. Chestnut, I suppose. Chestnut Appaloosa. That's a pretty pretty color on this one. Next here we have this guy who I do remember now that I see him. He is a prior proud Arabian but he is actually a chalky. I can tell right away just by the look of him here. It's kind of hard to show but it does have the bit of pooling of the white chalky paint there and some little areas where you can see the white chalky paint. It is kind of weird that he is sort of yellowed even though he is a chalky. The white base coat usually doesn't yellow from what I've noticed but apparently it does a bit. So I'll have to see if I can put him in the sun and he'll whiten up more. But he is really nice condition too. For his age. It is kind of hard to tell chalky sometimes in just pictures and stuff, but once you start to recognize them when you have one in person, it is usually gets easier to tell after you see a handful of them and start to recognize what base coat chalky vintage briars look like. 
I will be probably keeping this guy because I do think having some base coat chalkies in my collection is just really fun and a really cool piece of Briar history. This is a big model, whoever this is. I'm, oh, it's a Peter Stone. I was going to say, I don't think it's a Briar. Ooh, this is a fun Peter Stone trotting drafter who is glossy and appears to be done up in kind of like a red roan or actually a bay roan because he has the plaque points but he is pretty fun very pretty color he's very purpley my camera seems to be doing like some weird stuff with the white balance so apologies in advance if things look a little strange color wise he is really cool he actually has a little bit of uh, painted braids in his mane as well they're like black and silver they're uh, a little hard to show but he's got a little little thing of braids right there very nice white star on his forehead Oh, I remember this guy. I'm really excited to have him. This is Flame, the Island Stallion. I have a soft spot for this guy because of some old Briar Model Horse series. I think there might even be like the semi-glossy of this guy in this collection possibly too, and maybe I already showed him. I really can't remember. But this is the matte version of the Flame Island Stallion. Very pretty chestnut, and while this mold isn't necessarily my favorite, it is a mold I do think is very cool. Gonna do some classics that are down here. I always mess up the name, Misitano, something like that. I always remember to look up how to pronounce it and then I always forget. I love this mold though. This guy is a neat little Palomino dude. Very cute. Oh, this is actually not a classic. It's the uh, Briar Shetland Pony, and she is really cute. Because she has some fun, like, gray, splattery, white dapples on her belly. It's very neat. I do tend to gravitate towards models that have fun, weird colors sometimes because they're just so neat. So, she is quite the little cutie. And then we have a briar lying down full here. This is a cute little palomino. And she's got a cute little star and snip on her face. Very cute little girl. This is one of those molds that I kind of didn't like too much when I first started collecting because they were hard to film and play with. But now I do actually quite like this mold and like having a couple in my collection. On to the last model in this box who, I can tell by the size, the shape, and weight here, is a Othello. This, he's even got his uh, bubble wrap. I don't know if this is necessarily his original Briarfest bubble wrap. Maybe it is. This is a Briarfest special run, though, from Briarfest 2008. I believe this guy's name is, like, Sultan or something like that. I can't quite remember. He's got, like, little flea bites on him. He is very pretty. He does have a bent ear, unfortunately which he clearly already came with because he had the bubble wrapped wrapped around his head already. That's sad. He's got such a bent little ear that could maybe be fixed with a little heat. I don't know. It's a quite, quite bent, unfortunately. It's a sad little factory error. Very gorgeous, though. All right, to finish off this unboxing part, I'm going to go through this kind of medium, smallish kind of size box that has what looks like mostly tack in it, but I'm not entirely sure there could be other stuff. So let's see what's in here. First, there is Western Riding Saddle Set. Uh, it is missing a couple things. Then there are a handful of Briarfest blankets. I do believe I have one of these Briarfest blankets already, and I think they're just so cool. There are three of them here I'm seeing. Oh no, there's four. There's a whole bunch of them. Four of these really cool Briarfest blankets. I will probably not be keeping all of them because that is quite a lot to have. So I'll probably end up selling or giving away at least one of these. Now, uh, some of these packagings are kind of dirty and stuff. So obviously if I sell any of them, I will be cleaning them up first before they go anywhere. But this is a pink blanket and shipping boot set, which I do have this one. Got a USD... F, I think is what that says, blanket there, and a American Royal blanket. Oh my gosh, look what we got in here. We got all kinds of stuff. There is a bag of what looks like 
just various saddles and things, all kinds of different handmade saddles, which is just really cool. Ooh, this is a very nice one right here. Look at that. Wow. That is gorgeous. I definitely did not look through these really well when I bought this collection, by the way. It was kind of like, oh, I see a bunch of tack. I'm definitely going to want to take that home. But I did not have the time to like really look at all these individual pieces. This one actually has a little thank you uh, thing here. It's from eBay, apparently. One of the older kind of saddles that weren't by Briar, I don't think, but were made by different companies and stuff. This one says it was made in Mexico. But these ones are like big out of scale for uh, regular traditional Briar horses, but they still look really cool. And this one even has like a little horse on there. And here's what looks like another maybe vintage Western saddle. Some of these could be like Briar and stuff. Some of the older ones are harder to tell if they are Briar made or just made from other companies or handmade. This one is pretty neat though. It's got like foam on the bottom and nice soft leather and has some other little pieces on it here. Here's another one of the like big chunky <laughs> kind of older Western saddles. This one's neat though that it's black. I feel like you don't see black ones too often. You see brown ones a lot. Neat. Got some uh, saddle bags, which probably came from the set that was opened here. And a little briar water canteen. A very small, one of those little older chunky western saddles. I do think they are fun though. And there is a plastic saddle, possibly by briar or somebody else. And then there's two more of these. Oh, these got uh, kind of stuck together somehow, though. But two more of these little chunky saddles. And there are a couple bridles here. It looks like plastic, possibly briar one. And then a handmade one. A little western bridle. That's it for that bag. I see some more saddles, more plastic ones here. These ones don't look like briar. These ones look like they probably came from other sets. There's another plastic saddle from something or other. Here's another one of the big chunky older saddles. This one's really cool though. I love the pattern that's got like horseshoe and deer and a mushroom on it. Just so random. I love it. I love the colors on it too. That's really pretty. Here's another one. This one looks very similar to the other foam one. It's uh, similar to that other one. Here's another plastic saddle here. There are just so many saddles. Oh my goodness. This one looks like another plastic one, but it has a saddle pad thing with it. Yeah, it looks like uh, someone made this saddle pad to go with this saddle there. Unless this is factory made, but it kind of looks homemade to me. I don't know. This looks like just more uh, plastic saddles. Whole bunch of different ones. Oh, there is one that is briar because it says briar on it. These other ones kind of almost look like briar or something similar anyway, too. Chunky western saddle. This one's kind of neat because it's got some black accents on it. Man, there is just so much in this box. Here is a whole bunch of briar blanket. I'm obviously not going to go too detailed on showing all these. Just going to have to do it kind of quickly because there's so many. There's that one. There's this one that looks handmade, a pink one. Some of these look handmade and some of them are going to be briar, I'm sure. It's a brown one and a oops, saddle pad that kind of got stuck to it. Kind of see that there. There's a red one, green one, another saddle pad that looks like it's got something stuck to it, some Velcro. Oh, that's a briar one I recognize. Old green briar uh, full blanket. It's another briar full blanket, but a bit of a a newer one there. Red briar blanket. Another one of those uh, brown colored ones. Another green one. Another uh, briar one. This one of the uh, real horse things, a U-set one. It's a Briar Fest 99 10th anniversary blanket. That's really cool. Before we do more blankets though, let's also check this out. Here's an older briar saddle in blanket, still new in box. I'm assuming maybe it comes with a bridle too. Maybe not. It just says Western Pleasure Saddle. 
So maybe it doesn't have a bridle, but that's really cool. Still new in box there. Oh my gosh, look at all the blankets. So many saddles, so many blankets. I'm definitely not going to be keeping all of these, by the way. Okay, so these have like little pieces of paper with them, and I realize they are to show the model they, I guess, were made to fit, or they do fit. This says five gator, and there's all these blankets, which are probably looks like handmade ones maybe by somebody. And so I guess these are, or these ones anyway, were fit for the five gator. This one says fighting stallion, so I'm assuming these ones must fit the fighting stallion. Ooh, those are very pretty actually. I like the blue and like maroon and dark green. Those are pretty. And here is cantering Welsh. It's obviously meant to fit the cantering Welsh pony. Bunch of different, oh, colors for that. And then there's a Hanoverian, so made for the Hanoverian. These are really fun, really pretty blankets. And yet even more blankets. So many blankets. Like I said, I'm not going to be keeping all of these because as much as I love briar blankets, I really don't need probably this many. So there's another, oh, two more uh, briar fest blankets. Oh, this one's actually a different one. This one here, different uh, embroidery on it. And there's a blue blanket, two blue blankets. Oh, these are like some older briar ones, I think with some pieces of leather on them. That's pretty cool. Uh, that one looks like a handmade one. That's a briar one. And that's a handmade, I'm assuming all these ones, handmade ones. See, very pretty colors though. Definitely gonna be keeping a few of these. I just don't need all of them. What else we got here? Here's some smaller blankets, perhaps for classics or foals. Some bigger ones, brown, black, patterned, more brown ones. And then like a blue and a purple. I see some dolls in here, two of them, two Briar dolls. I think uh, this one might be a classic size, but this one I know is traditional scale. There's what appears to be like costumes and saddle pads maybe in here. Oh gosh, I don't even know. There's there's so much. Uh, yeah, it looks like some saddle pads, perhaps. Uh, this looks like an Arabian halter. And I'm sorry, some of this stuff is not going to look great without actually putting on a horse, but don't have time to try and show off every piece of tack really well. Yeah, there's more halters, it looks like. Another, like, Arabian thing. A little trophy and a little, I don't know what that is. That's like a little show ribbon thing. There's a lot more saddles here. Another older chunky leather western one. There's a few more uh, plastic saddles. Older chunky western saddle. Older briar tack. More pieces of tack and things. Like there's a little handmade something or other here and another saddle but with a red on it. Another briar saddle. Uh, what looks like another one of these older saddles. So again, I think this must have been made by a company of some sort because there are three of the like exact same ones. There's like a saddle rack stand kind of with it. I don't know. Here's one of the old Heartland riders, it appears. Native American Heartland. It says Wells though on it. I don't know if that's still Heartland or a different brand. It's like a little saddle pad. Here is part of an Arabian set, like a pretty saddle. Seeing a lot more saddles here. Another older, like, possibly briar saddle. That's definitely a briar saddle. That's a pink saddle from something, plastic one. Then we got some English stuff now. I've mostly been seeing Western, but there is some English things here. An older bright English saddle, older black saddle. Uh, another western one. This one looks like a homemade one. It's kind of neat. Briar saddle. This looks like Arabian, like, regalia. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is like a handmade Arabian set. Very cool. It's got, it looks like a bridle. Really neat saddle. And this looks like a decorative neck collar. 
Ooh, that's really fun. I'll have to throw that on a horse at some point and see what it looks like better. These are older Briar plastic saddles that go to the Western Prancer, I believe. See another blanket set here, kind of torn out of the package. This might have been like chewed on by rats or something at one point, who knows. The blanket itself kind of looks like it's still okay though. Then there are two more of these Western saddle sets, which were really expensive back in the day. $35.49, that's quite a lot now and uh, quite a lot back then for these sets, I feel like. You do get a lot of stuff. And then there is also a English writing set as well here. These are all kind of older ones, not ones that they still make as far as I know. Here's more vintage chunky western saddles. Another Briar plastic saddle. A really big chunky saddle. There's a tag here, which I don't know what it originally came to, but I'm pretty sure it didn't come to this. This one actually maybe be handmade, I don't know, but vintage saddle. Vintage Briar bareback pad. A little handmade saddle it looks like, possibly. A mystery bag here with saddle pads, kind of looks like. Little decorations maybe. Saddle blanket roll thing. Put on the back of your saddle. And here's what appears to be another vintage Briar saddle and bridle, but this one's a little English set. There's Briar English pads and polo wraps, except there's only one polo wrap and one pad there. Lastly, there are two vintage saddles here, uh, Briar ones. A vintage Western saddle and a English saddle, both still in their packaging, apparently. That's really cool. The English one also even has like a little cantina thing in there. I don't know if that is originally in there. Oh boy, that was a lot of tax stuff and I am definitely going to be selling and giving away probably a good handful of it. As I usually do at the end of these videos, I'm going to ask you which model in this video that I unboxed, or maybe even tack if you saw like a tack piece that you were really excited about. What thing did I unbox in this part of the unboxing series was your favorite? I know for me it has to be Briar Tempest, the connoisseur. He is just so cool. Although there were a lot of other really great models in this unboxing part today. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned because I believe I have about four more unboxing parts left in this series. So we're obviously not even done yet. There's still a lot more models to go through. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Thank you.